Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the data fusion service, uh, which is there in the Google Cloud platform. So we'll be discussing about what is data fusion and uh, uh, how we can create a data fusion instance in the Google Cloud. So let's see that. So, uh, so let's discuss about what is this data fusion. So nowadays, uh, uh, in the data engineering, <clears throat> so in the data engineering world, so people are mostly using the low code and no code based ETL tool. So this low code and no code based ETL tool has gained a lot of popularity uh, in the recent times. And if you see in the Google Cloud, in the GCP, so we have something called as uh, data fusion service, which is a low code or no code based ETL Tool. So you can create your complete pipeline using the data fusion instance. So using the data fusion service, you can create your end-to-end -end pipeline. And it is a fully managed product, which is uh, 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 available in the GCP. So the data fusion is actually built on one of the open source project, which is known as the CDAP. But right now, if you will see the data fusion instance is a Google native product and it is managed by both CDAP team as well as the GCP teams. So in the uh, data fusion, so you can create uh, both batch as well as the real time pipeline. So you can create the real time pipeline as well as the batch pipeline using the data fusion instance. So if you'll see, while creating the data fusion instance so basically there are three uh options so uh, which edition so there is an option like where you need to select which editions of the instance you want to create so in that editions option we have the option for basic we have the option for developer and then we have the option for enterprise so if you want to create a real-time instance, so you need to select the enterprise edition. So only the enterprise edition supports creating a, a, a real-time instance in the data fusion. So if you'll see in case of the data fusion, uh, so there are many logins which are already available. So as I told, it's a no code based ETL tool. You don't need to write any script. Even someone does not know uh, writing any script in Python or SQL or Spark. Still, they can create end to end pipeline using the data fusion. So, in the data fusion, if you see around 150 plus plugins are available in the data fusion instance. So, there are plugins for all the sources, there are plugins for different uh, transformations. And then there are plugins which are available for the sync as well. So there are many other plugins also available in the data fusion. So you can just uh, click on those plugins and you can drag and drop those plugins onto your canvas. And then you can start building your pipeline in the data fusion instance. So, and in the data fusion, uh, if you'll see in the background so when you are going to run the pipeline so let's say you have a source and then you have you are doing some transformation and then finally you have the sync so when you are going to run this pipeline in the data fusion instance so this pipeline will be running on the data block cluster and you can also configure this data block cluster so how many number of master node you want to use, how many number of worker node you want to use, and what, what are the uh, configurations you want to use for master node. Similarly, what are the configuration you want to use for the worker node. So you can also select that. You can uh, configure your data pro cluster, and then you can, uh, so the pipeline when it is going to run, so it will be using that cluster. And this cluster will be, will be an ephemeral cluster. So the cluster will be created only to run this pipeline. And once the pipeline is succeeded or the pipeline is completed, the cluster will be deleted from the data prop. Okay. So uh, let's see how we can create 
and how we can create a data proc, uh, sorry, how we can create a data fusion instance. So if you'll see, I have already created a data fusion instance. Uh, so if you'll see here, if you'll, first of all, you need to enable the data, data fusion API on your project. And then if you'll click on create instance, so here you can see there are options. So first you need to select, you need to give some name. Uh, you can give some, let's say demo fusion instance. And then you can select on which region you want to create the instance. Okay, so you can select on which region you want to create the instance. And what is the version you want to use, whether you want to use any older version or you want to use the latest version, which is 6.8.3. Uh, so you can select the version which you want to use for this data fusion instance. And uh, I was talking about the additions. So these are the three types of edition which are available. One is developer, another one is basic, another one is the enterprise edition. So if you want to build a real-time pipeline, so you have to select the enterprise edition because uh, the basic and the developer edition does not support building a real-time pipeline. And also if you want to know more about uh, this edition, so you can go to the official documentation here and you can see uh, how much each of this edition is going to charge you. And you can see also the difference between these three edition. So you will see in the case of developer edition, uh, the number of users are almost unlimited for each of the edition. But you will see in case of uh, the enterprise edition, they support they uh, the GCP recommends you like if you are going to create this edition for production workload, then better to use this enterprise edition. And also, as I told, if you want to build a real time pipeline, you have to create using the enterprise edition because other edition does not support building a real-time pipeline. And also uh, you can select the edition and then you can click on the service account which you want to use to create this uh, instance. So I am using the compute engine default service account and make sure that you have uh, provided proper access, you have to assign the editor role to this compute engine service account. And then you will select on the advanced option, whether you want to enable the private IP or you want to enable the stack driver logging for this instance, so you can, you can enable those. And then once you'll click on instance, uh, once you'll click on create, so it's going to take around 15 to 20 minutes to create uh, the data fusion instance. And once you'll create the instance, so you can click on view instance. It will click on instance name. So here you can see all the configuration, all the options which we you selected while creating this instance. And you can see uh, the service account. So the service account, the compute engine service account also, you can see which we, selected okay so uh when you are creating the instance for the first time it will ask you uh, so there will be a notification which will pop up while creating the instance here like you need to uh, grant the permission to this service account okay so you need to grant uh you need to grant the uh Cloud Data Fusion API service agent role to this service account or the uh, service account user role to this service account. Otherwise, <clears throat> your pipeline may fail while you when you are running your pipeline. Okay, because why you need to grant this uh, at a role? So if you take this, uh, how to grant a role? So you need to copy this service account, and you can go to IAM and then you can grant the access. So here you need to grant uh, either the service account, service, service account, service account, cloud data fusion service. 
cloud data fusion um, so this is the role which you need to grant to this service account okay because as i told when you are going to run the pipeline the data fusion pipeline uh it is going to use the data prop cluster for the computation purposes right so you need to grant the service account uh, that a cloud data fusion api service agent so that it, it can use uh, the it can launch the data prop cluster okay so if you do if you not grant the role then the pipeline may fail when you are going to run the uh, data fusion pipeline when you trigger the pipeline when you run the pipeline the pipeline may fail if you don't grant the permission now after creating the instance so if you click on view instance you will come here so here you can uh, start building your pipeline okay so if you'll see here by default all these pipelines which we are building it will be created under some namespace okay so when you created the instance so it has already created a default namespace for you you can use the, that namespace or if you want to create a new namespace you can also create a new namespace here and whatever the pipeline as i told you are building so it will be the pipelines you you are going to build inside some namespace and you can go to the studio and you can start building your pipeline so once you come here, you can see uh, either I can create batch pipeline or I can create the real-time pipeline. So if you'll see the batch pipeline, on the left-hand side, I have the options. So I can use the sources. All these plugins are available. I can use BigQuery. I can extract data from ADLS. I can extract from GCS, Kafka, Oracle. So all these plugins are available for the source system. Similarly, for the transformations, you can see there are multiple plugins that are available. So there are plugins for speech to text for data wrangling. So there are many plugins that are available. Similarly, for the analytics section, there are plugins available also for sync. And if you want to apply any conditional block in your pipeline, or if you want to handle the error. So for each of the uh, operation, there are plugins that are available. Similarly, once you select the real-time uh, pipeline, you can see the plugins are available like PopSolve, and then there are transformation plugins, so sync plugins. So there are many plugins that are available for the real-time as well. Uh, and on the here, you can see on the top, you can see, you can build your, you can uh, use the preview option, okay? So preview option is mainly used to do the dry run of your pipeline so for example let's say uh once you build your pipeline so you can just uh drag all these logins from the so let's say i want to extract the data from gcs i want to uh change i want to make some modification using the wrangling block and then i want to let's say uh, store the data in the BigQuery. So this way I can drag it and then I can click on preview. So preview is going to do a dry run of your pipeline uh, from end to end. So before deploying the pipeline, you can test whether your pipeline is working fine or not. And for that, you can use the preview option. So if you click on preview, it's going to right now. Uh, so you can see there are more options uh you can run your pipeline you can configure on what type of argument let's say if you are passing any runtime argument to your pipeline so those argument for all those argument you can pass the value here and you can click on run so it is going to run your pipeline okay similarly uh if you want to schedule your pipeline you can schedule if you can save your pipeline and then when you want to uh, test your pipeline so actually in case of preview, it's not going to create any resources, okay? So let's say you are storing the data in the BigQuery table. And if you run, if you just test your pipeline using the preview or if you do a dry run, it's not going to create any tables on the BigQuery. 
So when you will finally uh, deploy your pipeline and then you'll do the run, then you'll uh, run the pipeline. At that time only, it is going to create the resources. So when you are doing the preview, it's not going to create any resources. It will just validate your pipeline from end to end, whether all the input, output schema, all the data uh, uh, types, everything is correct or not. Okay. And then here you can see import and export option. So you can also uh, import this pipeline. If you want to import the pipeline, it will be the all the pipeline will be imported in a JSON format. Okay. And if you want to export the pipeline, let's say you have a pipeline which you have uh, stored on your local or uh, from any other system. you can import that pipeline as well. You can import the pipeline from your local system. So as you can see, I can, I so from the configuration will be stored in the JSON format and you can import your pipeline and then you can start running your pipeline. So this is uh, about the data cloud data fusion uh, and how to create a data fusion instance. What are the components are there in the data fusion? uh how to build a pipeline and also you can see like on the right hand side uh there are options like to uh align your pipeline to, or to zoom out your pipeline to zoom in your pipeline so there are multiple options are there if you want to add comments you can also add okay so this is all about the uh how to get started with the data fusion how to create data fusion instance what are the options are there and in the coming videos, we'll see some more use cases using the data fusion. Okay. So thank you.